Hello once again, ladies and gentlemen. Can we talk about Transformers? Yes, hello, how are you? Fine, thank you. This is the Can We Talk About podcast, and you know full well at this point we are chipping away slowly at the rock face of a little 80s cartoon from a series that is a giant mountain of content. Unlike Jem. <laughs> Unlike Jem, which was... Uh, from the Yeah, from the beginning we were like, oh, this isn't going to take that long. We are taking our time, though. That rock face is going to be a lovely Mount Rushmore Starscream face when we're done. Mount Screenmore. Yay! It is that series of Might and Metal, actual 80s cartoon classic, the Transformers. I make my home in Demon Swamp. My name is Joe. Joe. I'm a sawed-off nerd. I'm Kristen. And we are watching Transformers via Tubi, a free streaming platform, which Kristen, when I loaded it up today to rewatch the episode, advertising Cargo, which is a, <laughs> a blatant... You know, I'm, I'm sure, Krista, you worked at Kmart for a while. You had seen the the blatant rip-offs of Pixar movies. Joe, <laughs> with... I worked at Kmart for one month, and the amount of time that I was there, I was in the women's clothing area. That's true. You were not near the electronics department like I was. And I was texting all the time, which is why I got in trouble and then left that job. But well, I am aware of, you know, we've mentioned transmorphers before, how appropriate... <laughs> I didn't know they were allowed to advertise those things, which I guess is stupid of me to think that, but... I mean, it's not breaking any kind of law, but it's one of those things where you look at it and you go, really? Mm. <laughs> I um, just loaded up the 2B app on my PlayStation 4 for the first time, so that was fun. Um, the very first thing it did was like, hey, Kristen, do you want to watch There Will Be Blood? <laughs> and I was like, that's on here? Interesting. Um, no, not really. And it took a very long time for me to dig up Transformers, like, you know how it kind of like floats like the search queries it expects you to do to the top as you start searching yes transformers took until i got to trans yeah because uh there's i believe something called like my trans life or something like mm-hmm. that as well yeah. which is right to the top of the pile above the transformer stuff which is like oh cool nice i'd <laughs> actually like to I watch do... transformers though thank you <laughs> yeah i do look at that and think oh maybe i should be watching something like that <laughs> they should be advertising that or like there will be blood like you were saying yeah or dolomite how about if, if you want to, Kristen, then just skip right to what have you been watching recently. I did watch Dolomite Is My Name. It's great. Uh, Eddie Murphy and Wesley Snipes in it. Great. <laughs> I did finish the most recent season of The Great British Bake Off, um, and I was actually happy this year with who won, so that was nice. And it made me really hungry. Nice. The Toys That Made Us Season 3 is on Netflix now, which I watched <laughs> some of yesterday. Am I going to care and- about any of that, Joe? Uh, I mean, Power Rangers was one of the episodes, so you get to... Yes, I could check that mm-hmm. out learn about cool shit like they talk about Kamen Rider and Super Sentai for a bit, which is nice because very much, you never know with these things, Kristen, how often it's just going to end up being, I'm Saban, bought some shit from Japan. Mm -hmm. I'm learning that. (laughs) And they just gloss over all of it. But they spend a good amount of time on uh, the meat and potatoes of where it all came from, which I like. The toys that made us kind of got my number early on with um, Barbie and Hello Kitty. And after that, I was like, okay, unless they do fucking Bratz dolls or something. I kind of don't care about any of these other things. This week, Kristen, we bolster the ranks of our Decepticon forces because they they really, they seriously needed it. Obviously, I mean, (laughs) and like by bolster, it's not like, yeah, let's add a couple more. It's like, let's add a couple more and let's throw some clones in there too. I mean, nameless jets and reflectors just weren't, they weren't getting the job done. They were not cutting it. And Joe Starscream wasn't even in this episode. Horseshit. I wrote this at the end of the episode Skywarp absent too by the way but nobody complains about that (laughs) I noticed that I just cared more about Starscream (laughs) we did say that Starscream just kind of shows up after what happened in Countdown to Extinction and it's just like hey I'm here I'm back but uh he isn't in this episode so I'd like to think Kristen he's just in timeout in the Decepticon (laughs) base I was gonna say they took a break so all the kids would forget that Countdown to Extinction happened so then when he comes back next week they'll be like right that guy it also just occurred to me, Kristen, mm-hmm. that the Insecticons kind of function in a very similar way to the Dinobots of just like a tertiary group of assholes yeah. that kind of just show up when they want to. But, <laughs> but at, like at worse. The, at the very least, they're not stuffed into a linen closet, too. Yeah, I really don't like the Insecticons. We'll talk about it. It's a plague of Insecticons. Get the bug spray. It won't work anyway. Transformers, more than meets the eye. Autobots wage their battle to destroy the evil forces of the Decepticons, the Transformers. 
robots in disguise. The Transformers. More than meets the eye. The Transformers. A plog of Insecticall, written by Douglas Booth, who gave us such classics as Roll For It and Fire on the Mountain. What happened here, then? And Kristen, if you think about it, there was a lot of traveling over great distances over a short amount of time. <laughs> it, in contrast to Countdown to Extinction, where they were traveling short distances over hours. <laughs> I feel like, it's not that I'm immune to it anymore, because it makes me furious. But I get over it quicker, maybe. Um, also, I mentioned that I got to type notes again for the first time in quite a while because I got to watch on the TV with my laptop in my lap. And my first note is, can Kristen type notes and shove s'mores pop-tarts in her mouth at the same time? And guess we will see. <laughs> Would you like to report the success or failure of that experiment? I ate those pop-tarts really fast. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't much of a problem. We start, Kristen, in a swampy area with some men in boats leading packages down a river. And now, we get... am I crazy that my first instinct was, wow, Utah looks different? <laughs> on the tropical island of Bali. So we're in Indonesia. Yeah, I heard that and I was immediately like, oh no. Luckily, Kristen, the stereotype people aren't as bad as an episode like Fire on the Mountain. Not awesome still, and maybe this is um, partially influenced by the fact that um, I mentioned once or twice before that I took like an anthropology through art class in college and we did like a deep dive on a couple different countries and bali was one of them so i know a decent amount about bali i'm not thrilled with the representation <laughs> they do call it bali a few times too like the pinball company so exposition narrator man here talks about uh, a little <laughs> when like we a... started coming in on this one also i could tell immediately oh narrator's gonna be here isn't he oh, oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> he tells us all about demon swamp which is apparently where the insecticons are hanging out i wasn't listening i also am not 100 percent sure that's a thing. Um. <laughs> what, Kristen? You think that some random white guy probably made up a, a, a scary-sounding place in an Asian country? Here's I don't know thing. about that. My first instinct was, oh, right, isn't Bali, like, famous for, like, their, like, highly irrigated rice fields? So at first my brain was like, okay, this very wet area, swampy area, Bali, kind of makes sense. I give them too much credit. <laughs> yeah, it turns into the Midwest after, you know, once they get out of Demon Swamp. It just looks like Utah again. 25 seconds into the episode here, and we see Shrapnel, who I think is great, Kristen, because of his weird speech pattern, where he repeats the last word of his sentence uh, whispered most of the time. <laughs> yeah, so you mentioned at the end of the last episode about um, a speech tick of one of these characters, and as soon as Shrapnel talked, I was like, oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> I think the thing that's so funny about it is that it doesn't sound purposeful, I guess. It seems like... He just wants to, I don't even want to say emphasize because that's not right either. Uh, I thought you were going to go the direction of he's trying to do a chuny thing and be like super cool and edgy about like, oh, look at this cool thing I could do, but it's because I'm so fucking powerful. <laughs> I really don't know. Because <laughs> um, I'm trying to think like the Dinobots speak funny. Well, that's because their brains are fucked. And it sounds purposeful. This guy is just like, yes, this is me, Shrapnel a weirdo for no reason yeah he sounds like a pervert <laughs> whatever so we've also got dumpy ass bombshell here who is a rhinoceros beetle which one's and... the one who doesn't like have actual arms when he's a robot <laughs> i mean they all have arms i one of them maybe it was a, a bad shot or something that i had he just had weird pincers not actual arms when he was standing as a robot man and i was like oh, i'm sorry <laughs> You know what, that's probably Kickback, because I had the toy of Kickback, and his, like, the grasshopper legs kind of come together and form weird half-arms, with, no. like, so he, he, he doesn't, doesn't really work have... that way! <laughs> <laughs> the Insecticons essentially are just going to attack these poor boatmen here, and we get some lovely, there's something in the water! <laughs> Protracted daytime horror movie sequence, <laughs> where all these poor... Balinese men are like, what the fuck happened to our swamp? Um, apparently, the Insecticons have been there for a while. So, I, we'll get into that. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> the boatmen all turn tail and get the fuck out of there, and this is where uh, Bombshell and Shrapnel are kind of snacking on the grain, the rice, whatever. <laughs> Cement is also a <laughs> because I wasn't sure what they were hauling. They eat real food? 
They eat oil and rice and wheat and amber waves of grain yeah, in Bali. My first instinct was, okay, Bali. I'm assuming those are bags of rice. Why are they eating rice? And then we get to the fields later. Those don't look like rice fields to me. <laughs> are they eating wheat? And oh, wheat and then a sign of oil. And then energon cubes. And then bunch, bunch, bunch energon cubes. I think they just eat anything. <laughs> Cool. One of the boats survives here, and the Balinese men all just kind of start loading onto it here, and Bombshell and Shrapnel let Kickback know, Kickback the Grasshopper, uh, his introduction here. Joe, they I go, couldn't hey. tell what kind of fucking bugs they were supposed to be. <laughs> I mean, when robot bugs, it's a little difficult. Like like I said, Bombshell's a rhinoceros beetle, but I just say that because uh, you wouldn't be able to know with his big fucking TV antenna uh, <laughs> horn. Like, literally every single time they transformed into bugs, I was like, there it goes. I don't know which one is which. Not that I knew who they were in robot form. (laughs) Shrapnel is a Hercules beetle by his uh, weird shoulder pinchers that catch lightning later. And then what's the other one? A grasshopper. Wait, there are two beetles? Yeah. Rhinoceros beetle, Hercules. (laughs) Because, Kristen, Japan loves both the rhinoceros beetle and the Hercules beetle doing shit together. If Kamen Rider Kabuto was any indication. (laughs) That, that there was a whole argument in Tales of Berseria about whether or not a bug was a rhinoceros beetle or um, a Hercules beetle. I don't know what it is with Japan and beetles. Why wouldn't they be a different bug? Because <laughs> Japan loves beetles, Kristen. Cool, okay, I'm going to stop worrying about it. So Kickback goes, I better hop to it then, uh, as it looks like he's flying here. And then Kickback crashes directly into the boat. <laughs> and all those poor guys are just screaming and swimming at that point. And one of them, a stupid dumbass, lets it slip that, oh no, we gotta keep him away from the farm. And Kickback is like, wait a minute, there's a farm nearby? We've been living in Demon Swamp for four million years. Yeah, have they not gone out for a little <laughs> stroll? The Insecticons transform here and fly out of the area, which again, they may have been in for four million years. We'll get to it. Whatever. And we get a transition. <laughs> I did say transition. I'm not a huge fan of these guys so far. <laughs> And I don't know if it's because they all sound like whiny Starscream and Starscream's not here and that just makes me sad. That could very well be. Their voices aren't, other than Shrapnel having his weird speech tick and being like, Mm -hmm. sounded kind of like Tech Red, actually. (laughs) Interesting. So we transition over to the Ark, which is silver now, which is cool. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And so Spike and Sparkplug are back from counseling and they're doing good now. Um, But they still can't go on missions together. They're not ready for that step yet. But... Genius Spike says they got an SOS from Bali. He just happens to be listening at that exact moment and hands it over to Sparkplug, like the the head the human sized headphones that they have plugged into Teletran One, I guess. What do they do when Spike <laughs> and Sparkplug are busy? They unplug them so the entire base hears a, a police scanner, essentially. SOS from Bali. They're being attacked by giant robot insects. Dialogue taken directly from an Earth Defense Force game. <laughs> so. Skyfire is there. Sky- Kristen, how do you like Skyfire's appearance in this episode, where he is definitely more in line with what we saw in things like The Ultimate Doom, where he's just like, ah, gung-ho, I'm an Autobot. Mm-hmm. Joe, I am so fucking sick of Skyfire. I think I actually hate him. <laughs> the Skyfire Extermination Service is on the way. He always walks into scenes like, it's me, Skyfire. Oh, yes, I did right here. He makes his presence known despite being stupid tall and directly next to everybody else. They're like, yeah, we know you're here. God, because every single episode he's in, it turns into a whole, and now watch Guy Fire do this and this. And when's the last time we heard from Mirage? <laughs> Mirage, actually, he did use his shoulder missile last episode. Don't forget. When did he have a meaningful conversation <laughs> with the, anyone? The Ultimate Doom Part 3, maybe? I am just saying that we're spending a lot of time with Skyfire when we already know what the fuck his deal is. Like, Optimus is one of the main characters. I get that. Kristen, their toys are both big and expensive, so you gotta, sh- you gotta show them more. Even though Braun and Bumblebee are in every episode, it seems like. I recognized Braun. Yeah, uh, we get the, the dream team, the Douglas Booth dream team of Skyfire, Braun, and Windcharger again, mm-hmm. uh, plus Bumblebee and Spike this episode. <laughs> I am not a huge fan of the colors that Braun is. I just thought I would mention that. Orange and green? Yeah. It's just kind of ugly looking. Miami Hurricanes colors. So Cool. <laughs> they all pile into Skyfire here, Kristen. 
by all I mean Bron, Bumble Teeth, Wind Charger, and Spike. So Sp- all the Spike small is like, be- Dad, you stay here. You need to radio Optimus Prime. <laughs> They're at the Ark. Where's Optimus? <laughs> They're out on patrol, Kristen, as all the Autobots often seem to be. So, again, they just hear a distress signal and they leave. They do not get permission from anyone. I don't know if Skyfire is, like, a high enough rank that he's like, okay, yeah, I can check this out. Like, I can understand if, like, Jazz or Prowl went with them, somebody responsible, maybe. Like, and here's the thing, Joe. Again, I try not to be pedantic, but I just cannot help myself sometimes. Why couldn't they, like, send the Sky Spy (laughs) to at least see what the fuck is going on? (laughs) Laserbeak Kristen has something else appear out of his head here as he radios the Bali distress signal to Megatron because apparently Laserbeak is tuned to that exact wavelength as well and thought, hey, Megatron might want to hear about this. He picked up the installed microphones they have directly in Autobot headquarters. (laughs) Megatron brings Soundwave and Thundercracker with him because, again, Starscream obviously in timeout. Skywarp too busy stamping Frenzy down into a hole, so... Joe! Yes. Do you want to guess what my issue is with this next part? Uh, they're in Bali two seconds later. The Decepticon base seems to be in Bali now. (laughs) Because they just jump out of it and whoops, there's Bali. Normally, Kristen, there's a transition. (laughs) Like, at least if there's a transition, we can go, okay, time has passed. But, however, that did not happen. They from one background to the other. They used cartoon logic, and then they were in Bali. Ravage is ejected here to investigate the marsh slash swamp area slash whatever, and Ravage leads them somehow. He's a, a panther with tracking senses, I guess. He's a he's a dog, and he can smell Decepticons. Brings them to a home for giant bugs, as Thundercracker calls it. Although I don't know why he would say that. I don't know. It's like a weird giant moss igloo. I don't know if Thundercracker for some reason is implying like, wow, looks like. A big cocoon. (laughs) All right, Kristen, here we go. Time for us to get bogged down in this because (sighs) there are several interpretations that can be made from this, all of them bad. So Megatron says, this is a Decepticon escape pod. And it was ejected before their ship crashed on Earth, basically. Before, Before they even had seen Earth. So this means, one, the Decepticon escape pod was part of the Decepticon ship That's the underwater base now, which doesn't make sense considering Shrapnel says straight up to Megatron's face in this episode, (laughs) I don't know who you are. Two, the escape pod was from some other ship and by happenstance it landed on Earth, which means the Insecticons have been hanging around Demon Swamp for four million years. I mean, you say in your notes doing nothing. We know what they were doing. They were eating. They were attacking, and somehow they didn't... So they can't eat trees either, I guess. Even <laughs> though they might be able to provide nourishment. Maybe they and, just don't like how they taste. I don't know. I'll fight you. Don't worry about it. Number three. The escape pod was from a different ship, and by happenstance, it lands on Earth, much like number two. But, for some reason, the Insecticons only were activated like two months ago, like the rest of the Transformers. Yeah, they definitely made it sound like the Insecticons have had even more time to adapt. I don't want to keep coming back to this after saying it again so soon but they can eat like human resources <laughs> like food hey Kristen, what if in all the like weird major earth shifts that happened in the ultimate doom it brought up the escape pod that was like buried in the earth or something they just got rattled awake yeah. and they were like what the fuck yeah would, wouldn't that be cool or hey what if they were just decepticons that decided to come to earth while cybertron was in orbit do you think they were there first or <laughs> skyfire Maybe that's why, no, because it had to be Skyfire, because they say specifically that the Insecticons are Decepticons, but if you remember, Kristen, Skyfire and Starscream came to Earth at a time when Autobots and Decepticons didn't exist. How old is Skyfire? He's geriatric. It doesn't make sense, basically. Every option is bad, so. I chose not to think about it very hard. Like, we're here too somehow, and I'm like, okay. Thundercracker also explains that the Insecticons' idento-computers turn them into insects, which it would also stand to reason that if they've been there for four million years, uh, cars have not been around for four million years, but insects have been. So (laughs) we see the Insecticons here overlooking the mentioned farm from previous. They transform and attack, and a man goes, ah, 
a plague of monsters from the sky. Who, I mean, that's not entirely correct because there is only three of them. I mean, it is alarming. Maybe he just panicked. Um, this is, Joe, what does this field look like to you? Uh, amber waves of grain, as I said before. <laughs> Looks like wheat. So, do you want to, like, really quick, for my benefit, Google. Can you grow, can you grow grain in Bali? Balinese rice field. Because they look a very specific way. Uh, let's take a look at the images here. Uh, yeah, okay. I see that they're kind of uh, tiered in a way. They look kind of like stairs. They have like a topographical sort of look to them. Something that would be very, very easy <laughs> to use in your cartoon to be like, yeah, Bali, you guys. So this is kind of what I expected to see. And I'm the fucking fool. No, Kristen, it's the 80s. So you say farm and the, the animatic person, the storyboard person is just like, yeah, farm, grain, wheat. I guess, should we just be glad that they didn't have a bunch of corn stalks? <laughs> Maybe I'm looking yes, at this wrong. Yes, <laughs> I, I think that, that that would probably be the the worst case scenario is them just straight up in Nebraska. Yeah, so I've, I've made my complaint. Let's move on. We see the Autobots here, Kristen. They are driving in a ravine, which again, I, I so many things to get bogged down in this episode. They drove to Bali. Whatever. Move past it. Yep. <laughs> the Autobots are then... Stopped by a parade of sorts. This is a different set of Autobots, by the way. This is the rest of them. This is oh. Optimus, Trailbreaker, Asswipe, Sunstreaker, Wheeljack. And Ironhide is there, I think, too. <laughs> so they refer to what they run into as a village celebration, which appears to be happening in the many cliffed parts of Utah. A bunch of assholes in a ravine just being like, hey, ooh, party time. Woo! No village in sight. And Asswipe is just like, you know what? Fuck this. I know, a, I know a shortcut. And drives off a cliff. And the rest of the Autobots, like lemmings, follow here. Uh, it is a shortcut, Kristen. So driving off a cliff, hey, it, it'll get them there faster, of course. Short cliff. <laughs> here is the problem I have. Yes. And I know this is stupid. I'm yes. going to say it anyway. Why didn't they ask them? Dude. <laughs> Bali is the one who sent the SOS. They're robots in disguise, Kristen. They might scare the natives. You know what they could do, Joe? Make holograms of people. They could have brought Hound and made holograms. You're right. But Hound, nowhere to be seen in this episode. I hate this. Sunstreaker decides to question after they drive off the cliff. Wait a minute. Why are we following Asswipe, by the way? <laughs> and... Sideswipe here goes, look, I got instincts like a proton-powered pathfinder here, buddy, as they all almost crash into a rock wall. Also, do we need ten Autobots for this mission, especially when the Decepticons are down at two whole jets and they didn't bring a reflector with them? Clearly they do, because things really get messy. It is six total Decepticons here, and yes, everybody gets fucked up. So, they are looking at this cliff that they ended up near again, and everyone's like, cool, where's that shortcut you were talking about? And Asswipe is like, we'll go under the village. <laughs> this is the shortcut. We just got to dig the tunnel and nobody questions it. They all seem like stumped by this momentarily. And Sideswipe has to be like, oh, well, hmm. Ah, here's what we'll do. Don't any of these dipshits have drills that they've used in other episodes to go through rock? Kristen, Sideswipe specifically has pile driver hands that we've seen before that he has used correctly exactly once, uh, I believe, to get Skyfire out of the ice. All the rest of the time, he's been using it as like a bludgeoning instrument, <laughs> which is what we see him using later. Yeah, it's all stupid. Transition. So all the people are running away at the farm here, and one... <laughs> I did laugh at this part. Uh, there's... All the people are like running away, and there's a dude in the tractor who's just like, what? What's going on? He and can't he can't hear the them insect. over the engine. <laughs> Sees the Insecticons and goes, I knew we should have sprayed the crops! <laughs> the Insecticons are like, haha, fuck you. Wouldn't have done anything anyway. Kickback then kickbacks the tractor and uh, flexes on absolutely nobody. And Shrapnel is even just like, come on, we're good here, dude. Just cut it out, out. Skyfire arrives and uh, fight happen because they find Bug. Yeah, pretty much here. The Insecticons start firing on the Autobots. Braun here, as they all get out, uh, Braun is just like, hmm, wonder what's going on here. And he takes a fireball directly to the face that sets him on fire. And he's still just standing there like, hmm. Brushes himself off like, 
All right, now back to business. What's happening here? And we get, Kristen, the first of five instances in this episode where the Insecticons are suddenly like, look at the cool powers we have. have." (laughs) I mean, gotta get the kids to buy the toys, Joe. Bombshell shoots a missile, which blows up the tractor that Kickback kickbacked before. And Shrapnel says that he has a clone beam. You know, like bugs. Kickback shoots a beam out as well here. I mean, he doesn't say... Shrapnel's the only one who says that he has a clone beam, so these are clearly kick beams. <laughs> a bunch of weird flashing lines appear on the screen multiple times in this episode, and they're all the same color, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> and they do different things as well. So they create a bunch of new Insecticons, which seems, I gotta tell you, Joe, a little OP. Really useful, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, Shrapnel has, he okay, so clone beam. He's got, a, like, a control beam as well later, and he's got the power to harness lightning and uh, shoot the motherfucker out of people with it. It's so, like a Swiss Army knife. <laughs> a Swiss Army insect. Ew. Braun shrugs this off here, just going, uh, probably optical illusions. And then everyone starts getting their asses kicked. And I'm like, yeah, cool, great. Something, you know, Kristen, sometimes you write notes and you're like, that probably won't come up. I don't know why I wrote that. <laughs> I wrote specifically of one of the kickbacks, uh, kickbacking Skyfire directly in his chest, in his cockpit chest. And I'm like, why did I write that? That's not going to come back. And then it turns out Skyfire says specifically, I got kicked. I can't transform. Like, oh, cool. Thanks. And that lasts for five minutes. End of segment one here as Bombshell states, prepare for termination. It really is kind of like the Dinobots all over again. <laughs> segment two starts off here and the main insect, Kristen, the, the clones disappear for a while, which is a little weird. Cause... I couldn't tell any of them apart anyway. So when there were sometimes more, I was like, huh, what? Okay. When segment two starts here, just the normal Insecticons are running up on the Autobots here. And Windcharger, again, Kristen, is just like, oh, wait a minute. I remember this happened last time. Me, Braun, and Skyfire aren't a very good team. Fuck, we gotta, we gotta go. In retrospect, we may have made a tactical error. We cut to the other Autobots here as Sideswipe, yes, is still caught in his stupid lie here, just slamming out a rock wall with his piston hand instead of using it like a piston to, I don't know, uh, eat away at the rock, potentially. So he's just punching through a rock. And here's the other thing, Joe. He's doing it by himself. (laughs) None of the other Autobots are helping. I feel like that's a little bit of a theme in this episode. Some people are working and then other people are just standing around. Megatron does this really well later. I can understand, like, Sunstreaker because he's vain. He might not want to do it. Or Optimus is the leader, so fuck it. He's got other stuff to worry about. But, like, Wheeljack, Ironhide, and Trailbreaker are all just kind of standing, like, hands on their hips. Like, yeah, how about that shortcut, huh? Sideswipe? Like, bro, if you want to get to our... They're all laying on the ground... They got a board game open, and things are getting really intense. We get back to the Insecticons here, and back, Shrapnel... Back and fucking forth. Shrapnel fires a shrapnel bomb, uh, one of two occasions in this episode as well. Uh, the Autobots are all hiding in the tall wheat. Some Kristen, Skyfire is fucking huge. How are they hiding? Joe, it's very big Asian wheat. <laughs> also, the shrapnel bomb should definitely kill Spike. <laughs> I, is it a sign of the low expectations I have for this cartoon that I was, like, super impressed they correctly used the word shrapnel? (laughs) Wow, that's really low expectations for this cartoon, Yes, it is. I also, here's the other thing. I wonder what, it's, apparently it's wheat shrapnel, because what I thought was going to happen is shrapnel bomb, so it's going to go up, explode into a bunch of little bits. Therefore, even though they can't see where the Autobots went, one of them will go, ow! (laughs) Yeah, it's, you know, scorched earth kind of stuff, like a carpet bomb, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, so what happens is it just starts knocking down the wheat. <laughs> is now a good time to mention also that um, a lot of damage is done to Bali in this episode? Yeah. So yeah, the Autobots, once again, really don't do anything but stop the Decepticons? A lot of, Kristen, the ocean gets hurt in this episode more than anything. <laughs> it's just a disaster after disaster. Windcharger then uses a repulsor field to redirect the shrapnel bits, uh, which is totally different from the fucking magnetic body that he had in the Ultimate Doom. They're just trying to confuse me now, because my first thought was, oh, he's using a force field. Like Like Trailbreaker. Trailbreaker Trailbreaker does use his force field in this episode, Kristen, which actually has now turned into a ring beam. How am 
am I supposed to remember any of this shit? He's not even fucking spinning this time. What? SOS Dinobots lied to me. I feel like every single episode has been one lie after another. I'm sorry, that was War of the Dinobots because it was the meteor. Excuse me. Do you think maybe there's like a weird, purposefully confusing marketing thing going on here? Because, Joe, if I went to Toys R Us right now, in the past. <laughs> you can't go to Toys R Us now, no. Because so, yes, gone. in the past. And I looked at all the Transformers. I would be like, okay, I understand. I remember names and I kind of remember what they look like. Okay, so I'll get this one and this one and this one. Awesome. I bring them home and I'm like, here are my Transformers. Very cool. Once I take them out of the box, I do not see their names anymore. <laughs> I go back to Toys R Us to get more Transformers. I'll dip. I can't remember which ones I have. <laughs> Guess I'll just get more. I, d- I don't think that's the marketing strategy, Kristen. Joel, here's the thing. I can't say this with absolute certainty, but relative certainty that I'm probably smarter than the demographic for this cartoon. And you can't remember. The thing is, Kristen, I feel like it the demographic. It feels like I'm playing a fucking puzzle game every single time I watch it. I'm like, who are you? What's this? What's going on? The demographics for the cartoon, it's a lot like. I'd say Pokemon in a way. When we were kids, like if you started showing Pokemon to somebody now who had a limited interest in it, I don't think they would try, like they wouldn't actively try to learn the names of everything. I guess, is there a bizarre universe where we're watching season one of Pokemon and I call everything that shows up Pikachu? (laughs) It's kind of like, yeah, a lot of those like tweets and things like my mom tries to name the Smash Brothers characters (laughs) pretty much. Except it's me as Transformers. (laughs) (laughs) So you just call every blue one that you see Rumble or Reflector. So Kristen, Skyfire then reveals at this point that he cannot transform because Kickback kicked, he caved in his chest with a kick here. His ribs are all shattered. And how does Skyfire know Kickback's name, first of all? Kickback sweetly whispered it into his ear. (laughs) He just gets kicked and goes, Kickback! Yeah. (laughs) Skyfire was like, I mean, Skyfire walks around saying his name all the time. He's like, ah, must be his name. Braun Kristen here just wants everybody to look at the bright side. At least they didn't bring that sawed-off nerd Rumble. I, like, half imagine that Rumble was just gonna, like, come in from off frame and, like, drop kick him right in the face or something. <laughs> like, what's up? I am here. Fuck you. But they just dunked on Rumble. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand, like... Rumble isn't, like, I wrote the note directly under that was Rumble, dangerous motherfucker. Like, he's not, though. You know what would have made maybe a little bit more sense? Star um, Scream? Yeah! <laughs> like, whew, thank God Star Scream's still in timeout, because there are enough annoying voices here already. So Shrapnel walks over to Megatron here. They stop attacking the Autobots because the Decepticons flew in at some point. I forget if I mentioned that, uh, which I missed exactly the first time, too, because I was writing They were my notes. two jumps away from where this was. So they jump from the Decepticon base to jungle, and then they do another jump, <laughs> and they're at the farm. And... Shrapnel just, again, straight up to Megatron. I don't know who you are, but I do feel a kinship. Kinship. I just watched H-Bomber Guy's video on kind of like his retrospective viewing of some of the first season of Transformers and then watching the movie as well and kind of squaring with that tonal whiplash as an adult (laughs) versus as a child. And this is just making me think, because I saw some clips from that movie, which I have not seen all the way through. (laughs) And this is just making me think, like, they're going to do a universal greeting and start dancing (laughs) in Dirty Stupid. (laughs) The old ba weep gra na weep ninny bong huh? I knew you would know it! (laughs) (laughs) Kristen, I I made it a point. When they were like, yo, we're going to put the tra- we're gonna put Transformers the movie in theaters for one night only. I'm going to be like, I am 100% going to that shit. And when I was did. that? Uh, last year? Year and a half, maybe? So before I would have been interested. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, and there was a lady who was sitting next to me who was uh, whispering all of the lines under her breath. And I was just like, oh, my God, why did I go to this? <laughs> you know what? If that's what makes you happy. <laughs> that lady, not you. <laughs> I don't care about your experience. You have a podcast, Joe. I know. I can I can complain about it. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I have been having a really hard time looking Spike in the eye after knowing he says the word shit. <laughs> well, I was going to say we'll get to it, but we're a good year and a half away from the Transformers movie, so we can discuss that a little now. Okay, I have but a yes, lot of time the, to forget all the stuff I saw. In order to get a PG rating for it so they could, because like, movie times were weird in the 80s and you couldn't show... 
G-rated movies at night or something like that. Wow. They needed to get it PG, so they added in things like Spike going, oh, shit, what are we going to do now? And uh, the dude Ultra Magnus saying, open. Damn it, open! Is that still kind of a thing? Because I remember there's cusses in the SpongeBob movie. Was there? I don't yeah. remember that. Plankton says mm. the word hell. Hmm. Ah, maybe. I don't know. And there's cussing in the live action Scooby Doo movie too. You could tell Kristen, when you're when you're cast when you look at the movie poster and you see Freddie Prince Jr. and Matthew Lillard, like, okay, this is gonna be ho oh, oh, ho, alright guys, let's do this. And Sarah Michelle Geller and whoever played Velma. I can't remember who I don't, I don't even know who that other person is that is not Freddie Prince Jr. Matthew Lillard, the guy who's shaggy. I assumed by process of elimination, <laughs> but I don't know who that actor is. Basically, the Insecticons are welcomed into the Decepticon ranks with just no fanfare, just like, oh, cool, you're, you know, you're official Decepticon. I mean, you're Decepticons already, but yeah, let's work together. Yeah, they already have the symbols on them and everything. Shrapnel's just like, oh, cool, so uh, just help us defeat the Autobots then, then. And Megatron's like, okay. We go back to the underground cave here, and Optimus finally just, like, moves Asswipe aside and he's like, all right, look, I got this. And uh, Joe, cra- <laughs> yes. when I was watching this, I had a sudden, like, feeling of complete dread spread through me <laughs> when Optimus was like, I think it's my turn. Hang on a minute. And I thought, oh, no, is he going to crash through <laughs> the rock? And he does. And I think I turned and yelled, no! <laughs> why, Kristen? Because why did he do it? <laughs> Like, he didn't know how much rock was left there. That's very true. Like, maybe he had a sensor or something, and it was just like, I don't know. He I crashes like through he the did, I feel like if he did, he would have said so. <laughs> he crashes through the rock wall here, which is apparently 500 feet away from the farm, because the Autobots arrive just in time to even the odds here, and... You know, go into the village. So, like, all those people who are doing that celebration have no idea that all of their farmers are being um, attacked by horrible demon robot bugs. That's too bad. <laughs> Asswipe and Sunstreaker go headfirst into battle here, and Asswipe somehow gets, like, fucking caber-tossed by Megatron <laughs> once he gets close to him. And It's all he, very quick. It's boring. I don't care. He lands in the loving arms of Giant Skyfire here, like, oh, oh be careful there, little fellow, which Kristen must be so embarrassing when Braun, Windcharger, Bumblebee, they're all, like, 25% smaller than <laughs> Sideswipe. I mean, it's a term of endearment, Joe. He kisses his forehead and he's like, pat, pat. Mommy will take care of this. <laughs> Next time I'll call a cab, says internally seething Sideswipe. I like to imagine that all the Autobots are just kind of slowly getting sick of Skyfire, too. <laughs> like, why does he talk like he knows us? We were, we crash landed on a ship together. We were all asleep for four million years before, by, by happenstance, we woke up again. We've been through the shit together. What is his deal that he thinks he's our friend? Why can't we shove this guy in a linen closet like the Dinobots? They don't bother us. Like, it seemed like that's what they were doing for a while when, you know, they walked by rooms <laughs> and Skyfire is just in there by himself like, uh, I'm here too now. So, Kristen, we are foregone a robot battle here because Megatron, once he realizes, oh, we're outnumbered. You know what? I saw an oil refinery. I saw a dam along the way, actually. <laughs> but let's just go do the oil refinery because I feel like we've had our fill of dam plans. And I don't like the look of the Indonesian dam, if that's all right. The oil refinery is closer by, so they do a one, two, whoop, and just jump <laughs> on over there. Banana. So when we cut to this next part, <laughs> Skyfire just kind of like laying prone on top of a bunch of uh, the crops, which is cool. <laughs> Crushing them is totally fine. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my god, Skyfire is dead. No, oh, dip. But no, they were just uh, unfritzing his transformation module. They couldn't do that not on top of the crops. So Skyfire will keep an eye on the Decepticons from the sky. And we see the same Fire. animation of... We see, Kristen, the recycling animation of Optimus transforming into a truck three times in this episode. Uh, one time is wrong, which you might have noticed, but it doesn't we'll get there. Me. Soundwave lets Megatron know that they have company, and the Insecticons divert from the path to fuck up Skyfire here, which Before the clones... Skyfire leaves, they very deliberately say to him, don't forget, you're our flying guy. If you get in trouble, we can't really do much to help you from the ground. And Skyfire is like, okay! And he immediately gets in trouble. Because he's an idiot. Starscream really, really did a number on him. 
All the clones showed back up here too, and they're flying with Megatron and the rest of the Decepticons here. Basically, Megatron says, oh, we'll keep the clones safe if you guys want to go fuck up Skyfire real quick. Good deal, right? Good deal. Mm-hmm. Good deal. Yeah, you do the work. <laughs> uh, we're going to keep flying this way. See, I start to think to myself, like, what level of control do they have over the clones? Are they autonomous? I mean, we see the clone beams later just make them disappear, so you'd think that once they got out of a certain range, the clones just stop being. Uh, I think I'm going to throw up. <laughs> I really hate thinking about this. What I wouldn't give for a laser-powered fly swatter. Joe. <laughs> yes. We determined that the Insecticons turned into Insecticons because Earth had insects. Yes. When Skyfire know what a fly swatter is. <laughs> Why does Braun know what a magazine subscription is? I told him he learned from Spike. So he learned from Spike. There we go. No, I don't like that for some reason. <laughs> Swat this, you Autobot booby! Says Kickback as he's firing at Skyfire's undercarriage, trying to find his dick, just like, you know, come on. Let me shoot you there. So, does, like, could booby mean something besides boob? Uh, I assume it's uh, a doofus, goof. That's usually in line with boob, I'm okay. pretty sure because um, I'm going to go ahead, put a foot down, say that the Transformers do not know what breasts are. <laughs> they shouldn't know human anatomy, no. <laughs> they haven't met any women think. yet. <laughs> I don't know why you, I don't think you'd call Skyfire a pair of breasts anyway. Spike did not teach them that. <laughs> Stop bugging me as Shrapnel and Bombshell attach themselves to Skyfire's wings. And they just start the Autobots all <laughs> The Autobots all watch in horror as Skyfire's like spiraling, trying to get them off. And Optimus is just fine, like, Wheeljack, can you help him out, please? So Wheeljack flies, which he Christian, can? We have, he, can, he can fly. We have determined that. When? Again, he's got, we, we said, on his character card and shit and his bio, he has rockets in his wrists that he can use to fly. We don't see any that, like, animated. It just flies like he's Superman. And, of course, Asswipe has a jetpack, but we haven't that seen a jetpack in a, in a long time. So, <sighs> either mean, way. Hey, hey, if it's supposed to happen and it happens, and it just hasn't happened in a while, fine, whatever. I'm not going to complain keep, about Wheeljack doing stuff. I'm warming up to Wheeljack. <laughs> he keeps his arms at his side for the entire duration as well, so you can assume that if he has rockets in his wrists... They're propulsing flying, him in the correct direction. <laughs> he's flying like Iron Man. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So, he then uses his shoulder missile, which fires like a missile, to... Get rid of the two Insecticons on Skyfire's wings. And he uses the shoulder missile later, but it fires a laser, is my problem. I want to say that this annoys me, but I'm just trying not to care anymore. We really don't have time for it. We don't. Thanks for the hand, Wheeljack. Now try a foot, Kickback says as he kickbacks Wheeljack out of the sky. And That was pretty funny. And Kristen, again... People falling from any distance, as long as you... The floor is lava, the floor is death. If you touch anything other than the floor, you're cool. Because this big, literally a, a car, a car falls on top of Optimus's trailer. No dents, no nothing. Wheeljack's fine. Optimus is fine. Everybody's fine. Am I crazy Keep on trucking. that I feel like falling on top of a semi-truck would hurt me more than falling on top of some rocks? I mean, me neither would be great. Ba-na-na-na. Okay. The Decepticons arrive at the oil refinery, which scares off some Indonesian hard hat men here, and... They just start, this is mine now, this is mine now. Loading the cubes up, Megatron laughs, wah, playing, wah, going wah. Swi- <laughs> playing going swimmingly, blah blah. Wah, 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 Another... wah. <laughs> Two seconds later, what the fuck? Just an update. I feel like there's a similar, um, from the last episode of them just being like, we're not really sure how to split up these stories, so we're just going to keep moving back and forth as scenes happen in them. The Insecticons are still in hot pursuit of the Autobots here, even after getting fired off of Skyfire. And Shrapnel shows off another power here, Kristen. He takes control of Asswipe and Sunstreaker via uh, some control... I believe he just calls them control beams. I forget He exactly. basically does like an RC car thing to them. Yes. And turns them around to drive directly towards the Autobots here, which... The rest of the Autobots are very slow to respond to this. <laughs> They really, they really are. It takes until after Sunstreaker and Sideswipe, like, drive past them one time for somebody to transform and be like, okay, I should probably do something. Yeah, wait a minute. Us just playing chicken with our friends who are being mind-controlled is not really going to solve the situation. And Sunstreaker and Sideswipe are both like, you know, shoot out our tires. No, kill us now before we do more damage. And Which one tra- do I shoot? <laughs> Trailbreaker uses his force field here, Kristen, which again has somehow mm-hmm. been concentrated into a ring beam uh, to interrupt the control waves of shrapnel and... Sure, whatever. 
We see the recycled animation of Optimus transforming again, Didn't except notice. it's backwards because he was a truck turning into a robot, but we watch the animation of him going from robot to truck, and then we get the fastball special of Braun going, Optimus, toss me! See, I think my favorite part of this, he throws him so far! <laughs> It doesn't look that far initially. A but weird then he spatial falls thing. Forever. A weird spatial thing happens here where yes, Optimus tosses presumably like 30, 40 feet off the ground, we'll say the Insecticons are up in the air. Mm-hmm. And Braun starts like riding on either I think Bombshell, he gets kicked off, and suddenly he's in free fall for several seconds. Long enough to be Long- like ah! <laughs> And you know who catches him? Dudjo, right before he hits the ground? favorite jet sky fire you know flying really close to a j- the ground like jets do <laughs> much like in fire on the mountain again exact the exact same thing happened in fire on the mountain except braun drove off a cliff first in that episode we learned a little bit about optimus's throwing strength this episode which i guess is a cool fun fact that i didn't realize i did want to learn and then the insecticons just get bored and leave which ends segment two <laughs> okay peace later later <laughs> Segment three starts here. We are at the oil refinery, and Rumble is calling for more Energon cubes, so I guess, Kristen, they did bring in that sawed-off nerd Rumble. I like him. Why are they so mean to him? The Insecticons arrive, and Megatron is like... <laughs> is this, Kristen, what you're saying about people are doing work and Megatron's just... <laughs> like, what I wrote leaning? was, oh my god, Megatron's just chilling like a handsome man, my boy. He's, like, just leaning against a wall with his arms crossed, like, um, mm-hmm, yep, you guys are doing great. Keep it up. And he even, like, points with his thumb towards the oil tanker. Over his shoulder, like, hey, eat up. So the Insecticons go over to drink the oil right from the cow's engine here, from the the oil tanker. Which, apparently, this oil tanker just has oil everywhere, (laughs) because... I I wasn't going to say anything, because, again, I know I'm being really pedantic. I did write down, I don't think that's how the oil is stored. (laughs) They land on three separate areas of one side of the oil tanker. Obviously, by tanker, it means the entire ship is the tank. Not that there are tankers inside of the ship. Just filled entirely with oil, yes. Yeah, they just gnaw on three different parts of it and do like a little vampire bite into them with their weird horns. It does leak a bunch of oil into the water in the process, which I thought that they were going to do a little bit more with. Uh, but, uh, Kristen, as you said, you, there's a lot of uh, environment being destroyed in this episode. <laughs> the fact that they acknowledge at all that oil is flammable is... I don't want to say impressive, because that's not right, (laughs) but it's nice. Again, another thing that's incredibly obvious that you're giving the cartoon credit for. I have to, like, somewhere, don't I? Skyfire arrives on the scene again here, and somehow knocks Kickback and Bombshell off of the tanker by, like, clipping them with his wing. He slaps them? (laughs) Yeah! Again, flying really close to the ground. Again, like... The amount of control he has, man, he is feathering it. Threading the needle. There he goes. The rest of the Autobots arrive here, and Megatron says, weirdly, Soundwave, activate the Ravage cassette, which is just rude to Ravage. It's demechanizing. <laughs> Soundwave really doesn't say anything this episode, does he? I think he says zero things this episode. <laughs> I, and that bothered me. He's just getting bossed around, and the alternative is that we get to hear a bunch of annoying bug voices. I, Soundwave might have one line. Thundercracker has, like, two lines, maybe. <laughs> the rest are all just Megatron and the Insecticons. And like a thundercracker second in charge in this episode the autobots as they are avoiding ravage here and the rest of the decepticons they somehow get like to they get they sandwich themselves between both factions of decepticons they take a nice little jump they leapfrog so the insecticons get off the tanker here and a gun literally appears in kickback's hand like there's even a little like whip like synergy (laughs) noise when it happens love it and shrapnel is like no wait i want to do something cool cool And he fires another shrapnel grenade, Mm -hmm. which sends Optimus, Wheeljack, and Brawn into the water. But it does, like, that's all it does. It, like, Kickback had them dead to rights, but no, gotta do the He wants to set them on fire. He wants finely roasted Autobots. So Optimus says, okay, there is oil in the water. We should be careful and kind of get out of here as soon as we can. Uh, But Thundercracker (laughs) is right there, like, on the bay. (laughs) Like, that's hilarious. And he sets them on fire. He, Optimus speaks the Inferno into reality because Thundercracker probably didn't think about it until <laughs> that very moment. It was like, oh, fuck, I have a flamethrower. Yes! It doesn't make much of a difference because they do just dive under the water. Yeah, and then they crash through the dock, which we don't see Thundercracker for the rest of the episode. <laughs> Once again, too, the buoyancy of Transformers. 
I'm really getting stuck here. We'll talk about it, Kristen, because some a weird thing happens later. Uh. The fire then spreads to the tanker, and finally Ironhide, who has had zero lines this episode, is called to do something. As we've seen glue, we've seen the deep freeze shit that he used on the sand last episode, Mm -hmm. and now he apparently just has fire extinguisher fluid in his arms too. I feel like every time I remember who someone is, the cartoon specifically does stuff to make it so I can't reinforce that knowledge. So I keep thinking to myself, Ironhide's gonna do something this episode, right? And then for a really long time, he doesn't. And I'm like, that is Ironhide, right? <laughs> I start to question reality. They aren't being consistent with the powers, so you can't you can't rely on remembering something like, oh yeah, Trailbreaker has a force field, when every time he uses mm-hmm. it, it looks different. Joe, have you made me those flashcards yet? Some storm clouds roll up on the fight here, and Kickback says, the day is won! Megatron's like, shut up, keep fighting. Megatron has no idea what's going on. And even as like Bombshell fires a missile into the clouds and Megatron's still standing there like, uh, the Autobots are on the ground, my dude. What do you do when you're wasting ammo? I don't know what it is with this cartoon and firing into clouds to make stuff happen. The little acid rain and now we've got the weird, powerful lightning. I said that... that quickly just so I could get it out there into the universe and we don't have to dwell on it. But I want it to be known I don't like it. Shrapnel explains that his weapon is in the clouds. Yes, it is lightning. And Shrapnel's big uh, Hercules Beetle pincher things catch the lightning and make him super electrified. And he goes, taste the lightning, Autobot fool. Fool. To which Wheeljack responds after getting uh, directly to the dome piece and knocked back into some crates via lightning. Goes, tastes terrible. He's not a fan. <laughs> I'm, Wheeljack is the sort of guy who likes Italian cuisine, so lightning's just not going to cut it. You can't mix your pasta with lightning, all right? Come on. Is the amateur hour or something? So, Kristen, the stupidest thing ever happens? The stupidest solution <laughs> I was gonna say, to this you, issue Can you quantify happens. a stupidest thing in this episode? <laughs> Bumblebee and Spike are very concerned with this lightning that is going on. But Spike has the bright fucking idea. Wait a minute. Let's just drive toward them. Because <laughs> we don't know what the plan is until he is okay. Yes, Optimus seeing Bumblebee drive towards Shrapnel is like, Bumblebee, wait, no, Spike is going to die. What the fuck? <laughs> um, so they get lightning blasted. Nothing happens. I didn't realize what the fuck was being implied here. Thank God. Kid genius, not quite as genius as Chip Chase, Spike Hardhat, explains to us that the fact that the tires are rubber and touching the ground makes the lightning not work. I don't know about that, Kristen. I'm not sure either. I do, like, it's the sort of thing, I know if there's a thunderstorm, you want to be, like, inside your car under a bridge. If you have nowhere else that you can be. I can understand Spike not getting hurt by any of this. I don't think Bumblebee can get hit by lightning <laughs> and not... rubber neutralizes. <laughs> no. Because here's... The, my favorite thing is that um, once everyone starts to realize this, they do some skating on their friends. Wheeljack rides on top of Sunstreaker and when hit by lightning, nothing happens to Wheeljack because of Sunstreaker's tires. And they just Somehow. keep getting hit directly in the fucking faces. Optimus uses Brawn and Windcharger like fucking roller skates, and nothing happens. So, eventually the lightning like goes away. What fucking happens next? <laughs> Shrapnel just stops trying because <laughs> oh, Megatron. Fuck, quit. Megatron says that he has a more powerful weapon one at sea so he reignites the tanker here and starts pushing it closer to the refinery which optimus just like grabs the front of it and flips it on its side which Kristen, whose tanker was that i see what i wrote down was i hope there weren't uh, people on that tanker (laughs) as this is happening uh i guess the plan changed because shrapnel starts using the clones here instead of just uh, giving up they take a little bit more to give up here And Spike and Bumblebee are surrounded by clones, which another weird thing happens where Trailbreaker uses his force field. He uses his force field on Shrapnel to stop the clone beam, which just makes them disappear. (laughs) Were they clones or were they holograms? (laughs) They were. They were real. They got hit. I don't understand what happened. I do feel like they kind of um, Infinity War crumbled too. (laughs) They just said, "Mr. Stark, I'm not feeling so good," and they all just disappeared. Mr. Bumbleteeth, I'm not feeling so good. 
Megatron emerges from the water to fire on Spike and Bumblebee after this, but Optimus Kristen, again, we're talking about buoyancy here, somehow is able to lift the entire tanker above his head whilst in the water and toss it at Megatron. Well, Joe, here's the thing. Optimus can float. The boat can float. (laughs) When he picks up the boat, they both float. Oh my god, you're right. That's the same logic (laughs) as let's cut a hole in the ocean floor and then jump up through it. (laughs) I love it. The Insecticons then realize as they see this, like, that guy can float. We should probably get out of here. Oh, shit. So the Insecticons are like, uh, let's just go eat those Energon cubes and go back to our fun swamp. Yeah, Shrapnel decides that they do not need allies, the Insecticons, so they eat the, so what they consider, that ship. <laughs> what they consider their share of the Energon cubes, and they run away. And Meg- Kristen Megatron says that they befriended the Insecticons. <laughs> After calling them, you know, traitors here and stuff like that. And I feel like Megatron can't, doesn't know what friendship is, much like Pizzazz does not know (laughs) the cost of things and other such things. So here's the problem. I feel like it would have totally not even phased me at all if Megatron had been like, what the hell? I'm the leader of the Decepticons. You dipshits. You're, you're traitors. The thing is, I don't believe, all he says to the Insecticons when they first show up too is just like, oh, Decepticon engineering brought you to life and it brought us to life too. And that's all Shrapnel needed to hear and, and not, I'm the leader of the Decepticons. You work for me. Yeah, whatever. So Megatron mistakenly thinks that Shrapnel was his best friend and his feelings are really hurt. Um, so they go to clean their clocks. For once, I wish Megatron the best of luck, says Bumble Teeth as they all fly away. <gasps> Into the sunset. And this oil refinery is burning to the <laughs> fucking ground. And all the Autobots are still just standing there. Wow. And just so we cover our tracks as well to avoid any, you know, potential future continuity errors, Optimus is just like, okay, so they're still, in, they're still Decepticons, though. So if we see them working together, they, you know, they probably came to an agreement. Don't worry about it. They got their slap on the wrist. And then Megatron looked around at how few people he had. <laughs> and he's like, uh, let's be friends again. But when they come back, we'll be ready for them, says Spike, as Dad Optimus is just like, ha spoken like a true Autobot. Is it just me or does this last part go on way too long? It does. It absolutely does. It's like they're really forcing it. The episode very much could have ended with spoken like a true Autobot. Wheeljack says, hey Spike, say the word. I'll design a vehicle form for you. Playing God again. Maybe a motorcycle. That would be a new one. I oh mean, my God, doesn't... like Born This Way with Lady Gaga. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Spike, what happened? He's on the edge of glory, Joe. <laughs> and then Spike confirms he, again, could have ended there. Spike confirms he is 15, so he cannot drive yet. And then they could have ended there with everybody laughing. And... Wheeljack goes, hey, you got yourself a deal. They decide to end the episode on Wheeljack saying, you've got yourself a deal, which what the, what the <laughs> fuck? Someone really, really loved that exchange. I wonder if it was supposed to be used in a different episode at some point, And they were like, please, please go and use this thing that I wrote. And they were like, fine. Now, Kristen, the first episode of season two is called Autobot Spike. I don't know what it's about necessarily, but... Mm. He was born that way, Joe. So that was a plague of Insecticons, Kristen, and I don't know if it was just both of us being loopy, but there's a lot of shit to get bogged down with in that episode. I, while watching it, did not like this episode. Like, and we, of course, have a scale that we kind of can consider things like, this is stupid, but I'm also really enjoying it. I loved Countdown to Extinction, and it was maybe the worst episode so far. <laughs> But it was fun, and Starscream was there. And do you think then that, much like Renaissance Woman not having the misfits in it, it directly impacted your... I mean, you, we both enjoy Renaissance Woman more in retrospect, but... Mm-hmm. I don't know, are you saying if we wait like two years and I watch this episode again, it turns out I'll really like it? Maybe. I think the Insecticons are boring. Are they in the next episode? I don't believe so, no. Good. <laughs> they, they show up sparingly, much like the Dinobots, possibly even less often. I think they have like five or six episode appearances, something like that. I could not care less, I don't think. Especially knowing that the Constructicons are a thing. Yeah, in the very next episode, as a matter of fact. Cool, yeah, I'm way more interested in them. Now's the point in the evening where we'll list off all of the fun contact things where you can find us. You can follow us on the Twitter machine at CWTAPod. You can follow me at Octopus, which is A-W-K-T-A-P-U-S. You can follow me at Funny Girl TM, like trademark. 
You can find us on the Apple Podcasts, on the SoundCloud, on the Stitcher Radio, on the YouTube even. Leave a rating, give a review, do whatever you feel like. You can also drop us a line at cwtapod at gmail.com. You can tell us all about why you would want to build a farm of wheat near a place called Demon Swamp and how Bumblebee's solution with the lightning and the rubber is unlitted bullshit. And you can check out my new podcast, Little Project ASMR Relationships, the podcast equivalent of listening to gossip that has nothing to do with you. You can find a link to it in the episode notes follow it on twitter at reddit gossip it is on a as i have time to put out new episodes update schedule at the moment but what is there is there and it's good to listen to enjoy next time Kristen, we have even more characters the final episode of season one of the transformers six all new characters and the pieces that make up the big green construction machine devastator i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt that was a genuine reaction from me i did not realize there were six Oh yeah, there is there are six constructicons. So that just goes against my understanding of combiners in general, which I expect to be five. Five, yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll get into it, I'm sure. Uh, long haul is one. Yes, is the is the dump truck. Mixmaster is the yes the. <laughs> Kristen, I just finished editing Countdown to Extinction yesterday. You didn't listen to it and remember from the conversation we had at the end of that episode, right? Yes, I did, which is why I don't know what any of the other ones are. The Constructicons, from what I remember, though, Kristen, play a very secondary role in the episode when the main plot line is... Optimus vs. Megatron, again. Or Starscream. After that, of course, Kristen will be our season-end extravaganza. Like the Kimtakivers of old, we are going to go over the season that was, though I don't think we'll be writing songs this time. No, we need to make space for all of the Starscream fanfiction I'm going to write. If you'd like to participate in this wonderful episode, please do send your favorite, least favorite, everything you love and hate about Season 1 of The Transformers to cwtapod at gmail.com or cwtapod on Twitter. Or you could tell me and Kristen straight up, now tell me, do you really want to love me forever? Oh, oh, oh. For the Can We Talk About podcast, my name is Joe. I'm Kristen. And join us next time for Kristen, what is surely the final confrontation between Optimus Prime and Megatron. I mean, how could there be anything else? It's in the mail.